The national rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine is well underway and Bristol is home to one of several super vaccination hubs. It's our best shot at ending the pandemic, but there seems to be a lot of vaccine hesitancy, ranging from those who are strongly opposed to taking the vaccine to those who are just not sure. According to a recent survey, one in four Brits are entertaining anti-vax beliefs. Is this something we should be worried about? Why do some people believe what they do? I chat with psychologist Stefan Lewandowski to find out more. Let's go straight to it. Why are there anti-vaxxers? In virtually all countries around the world, people on the political right are more hesitant to be vaccinated than people on the left. Usually what it is, is some sort of opposition to a paternalistic state telling people what to do. If someone takes a vaccine, why should I have to take it if they're immune already? So that's why I think freedom. Another factor that turns out to be very important is people's predisposition to believe in conspiracy theories. At the NA, they want to tweak it with the aid of enforced vaccinations. A wireless hook up to the AI smart grid in every town, every nation. I do believe that it's got a chip in it. You know, from what I've read, what I've researched. Vaccine hesitancy and opposition to vaccinations comes in all different shades of grey. People who believe in conspiracy theories, that is describing a substantial share of people who are very much opposed to vaccinations. If I know that a person tends to believe in conspiracy theories, then I have a one in four chance of knowing that they're also anti-vaxxers. It's a pandemic, if anything. Um, I've been studying that for years and there's so much on the alternative media now, although it's being censored very quickly, you've got to switch your televisions and radios off and start doing your own research. And as soon as you start researching it, it's so easy to find what's really going on. As always, let's keep this fun peaceful and loving. We can simply follow some of the current guidelines, regardless of how ridiculous they may seem to all of us. We will stay on the road rather than the pavement, otherwise we may either infect the thousands of shoppers or they may infect us with some nasty bug. Take your freedom back. Stefan's research has identified several traits of conspiracy thinking which include being immune to scientific evidence and making links between random events. A number of other factors can also contribute, such as the spread of misinformation and feelings of powerlessness in a crisis. Take off your mask! The government and the media are lying to you! The prominence of such views have been labelled a risk to public health. With strict limits on our freedoms and increased time for scrolling on social media, has this pandemic created the perfect storm? If you want to protect old people, take your mask off! Freedom of speech is one thing, but the freedom to kill people by telling them something wrong, that's sort of something different. Next, I speak to Pollyanna, a protester from the anti-lockdown march. Thanks for coming out on this very cold Bristol morning. Isn't the vaccination our best shot at ending this pandemic and ending the lockdowns and restrictions? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm not going to stand here and to tell people not to take the vaccine. It's freedom of choice, OK? And that's what Stand Up X and what I am about is the freedom to choose for yourself. I don't want to be like ridiculed or branded a conspiracy theorist or anything, but I do think there's a dark agenda behind this. I do believe that this vaccine is going to latch onto our own DNA and change it. I don't really trust the authorities much. I don't trust mainstream media. You know, I'm 47 years old now and I've had a lot of experiences with these people and I have found the more I've trusted them, the more they've shot me in the foot, do you know what I mean? Pollyanna, how's your year been? You know, numerous lockdowns, restrictions, how's it been on you as a human being, as, as Pollyanna? As Pollyanna, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like the kind of girl that likes to get in the woods and forage and stuff like that, so I don't really like being out. You're having a great time. I'm having an amazing time. <laughs> what I... Apart from the fact that my children all live out of Bristol and my um, daughter works for the NHS so she, and, and has a little boy with cerebral palsy and all this, so getting to see her, my brand new granddaughter, don't get to see them, you know. So the separation from my children, 
So it's been difficult, a difficult time, a difficult year. And I don't know when I'll get to see them again, sorry. That's what breaks my heart. But otherwise, yeah, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. You said your daughter works for the NHS. Yes. Um, how does she feel about your views and what you're doing? She loves me very much, but I think she thinks I'm a bit cuckoo. She's going to take the vaccine. So she, she's recently had a baby, so she can go back to work, and that scares me. Things that I stumbled across maybe five, seven years ago, and I thought, oh, I'll keep an eye on that. It's all coming out now. You know, I can see it happening. I really can. Almost a thousand members in this one, and this is just Bristol alone. And I guess if you're already having doubts about the vaccine and the lockdowns, etc., emotive language and sort of real strong emotive images uh, that are on the, the group would have, a, have an impact on you. So there's a group of uh, anti-vaxxers just over there on the harbour side. Uh, what do you think about anti-vaxxers, mate? Um, I don't know, I've heard things that have worried me with yeah. fertility and stuff it's, with it, I don't know. It's hard, isn't it, because they came up with it so quickly and I don't know how that's going to affect us in years to come. I think they'd be unreasonable because for their own selfish agenda they could be putting everybody else at risk. I'd probably not get it done, see what happens after five years and then potentially be like, all right, cool, let's go now. <laughs> and you also said, you said that you've put worse things in your body. Yeah. Uh, we won't go into too much detail <laughs> what those what those things were. <laughs> you know, you can speculate, but um, you know, Only why, alcohol. what's, I mean, if, you, if you've done that, then what's the problem with having the vaccine? And that's what I'm saying, there's no problem. So I'm not for or against. I just don't feel the need to put something in my body that, I don't feel like it's actually going to massively benefit me. No, I don't get the car game. The government's making me wear a seatbelt. They're, 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 they're subjugating me. They're, you, know, oh, yeah. you know, I do it because it's sensible. You, you, you protect yourself and you protect other people. It's not, it's not that hard to, to figure out. In some ways, I agree with them. You know, like the government has made lots of mistakes. You, you seem quite angry at them. I was on call last night and I'm going to be on call again tonight. And I'm going to see patients with COVID and I'm going to see the results of people that aren't getting treatment or should have had treatment sooner because of Covid. When I've been at work and I come and I walk past and things like that, I just think, oh God, come and walk around my job for a bit. The only thing that I find upsetting about people having different views is the divide it causes. I've had one person say to me, I will hold you down and they will give you that vaccination. I mean, it's like, <laughs> that's a really horrible thing to have said to you when we march and everything, that feeling of just all being on the same page and all feeling like we're, we're doing something good, you know what I mean? And that, I don't know, that togetherness, you know? And knowing that you're not actually going cuckoo. <laughs> Other people, people across the world have the same views. I don't know if I'm right, but you know, I might not be wrong. Speaking to Pollyanna raised another important reason why people are hesitant about the vaccine. And that is a mistrust of the government, the media and big business. If you feel you have been betrayed and lied to, then you are more likely to be suspicious. This perhaps accounts for higher levels of hesitancy in people of colour, lower income groups and those who just feel left behind and now they can all find each other online and get organised. Pharmacist Ade Williams, who has started giving people the COVID-19 vaccine in South Bristol, is a good person to tell us more. I'm here at a NHS COVID-19 vaccination clinic with the main man himself, pharmacist Ade Williams. The whole idea is that you are actually in and out in about 10 minutes. And then this is where the jab takes place, I'm guessing? Yeah, that's it. Oh, there's a lot of scepticism. How do vaccines actually work? So, um, broadly speaking, what vaccines do is that they prime your immune system. When the vaccine comes into your body, it doesn't change anything because, remember, it does not bind to your body, it does not change anything, it just causes a response. I've already had COVID. The value of the vaccine does not diminish just because you've had the, the COVID before. Just because it didn't kill you the first time doesn't mean it can't get you the second time. So the vaccine, it causes infertility. Yeah, and that's not true, but I think particularly around the 
COVID vaccines. I, I know that the reason why some people say that is they've heard that, you know, if you're pregnant, you shouldn't have it. And they're thinking, hey, what's going on there? A vaccine usually takes a decade or so. This only took a year. This time, this is a global effort. The UK, I think, put in about six billion into vaccine research there, and that's all the other countries as well. Scientists sharing information. Why should you trust these big pharmaceutical companies? I think I think Pfizer and I think AstraZeneca have said that they're doing this at cost price. I mean, you know, and and the reason why that is is that they also know that the funding that's allowed this to happen has come really from you and I. People of colour being more suspicious about the vaccine compared to other groups. How do you feel about that? The challenges of being a person of colour predates Black Lives Matter, it predates COVID. And what COVID has done is we've seen lots of people of colour die, sadly. That injustice and that sense of that, that trauma as well of seeing people die has also you know, raised the levels of distrust, which is understandable. Elders of colour are more suspicious of having the vaccine and are more likely to refuse it. What do you say? What happens, right, I'm just well. They got this attitude, right? I'm not like that, but I remember we took us to the doctors. That, oh, I'm not going to the doctors because they're killing me. Can you remember the first COVID vaccine that you gave and how you felt? I, I do, actually. Um, it's quite emotional, you know, he was an elderly gentleman and he turned up one hour early. It was just me and him talking about hope, actually. And you know, I've seen eight-year-old, eighty-year-olds, you know, do fist pumping and just there. Yeah. I, yeah, you know, and I think because you know, for them, they've just got something back. How was it? Absolutely fine. Everything was explained to me. Possible side effects. Um, I didn't feel it. It was painless and very quick. And I'm very privileged to have it. Uh, well, actually, my ex-husband was very hesitant, but I think I've persuaded him that he not only has to look after himself, but he has to look after other people as well. And if he was carrying the virus, he could give it to other people. So he has agreed to have it. What would you say to people that are refusing the vaccine at the moment? I'll, I'll say that they have a right to, but I'll say that please, rather than kind of just, you know, putting yourself in the binary position, like everything else, you know, look at it, keep evaluating it, keep researching, keep listening, keep talking to people. Don't just let your fears or your own level of distrust or the information that you believe is really authentic, you know, which maybe most likely is completely wrong, to, sh to shape your decision around this. And we must respect your choice and respect you in that place. And if it's because of your level of distrust, I think that's also for us as a society to win that back. This is about how do we help you feel valued in our society and know that the decisions that we are trying to do together protect all of us, not just those that we feel are more privileged. Vaccine hesitancy has been around for as long as vaccinations themselves. But at this point in the pandemic, what are the alternatives? A healthy dose of scepticism is really important, but good science is very often our best bet. But it just seems, and we've been here before, science and facts doesn't seem to be enough. Perhaps the bigger question here is, is how do we restore trust across society, in our institutions and in our communities?